Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be looking at how to fly a localizer approach in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to explain how to fly the approach in the Cessna 208, but the concepts are going to apply to most of the general aviation aircraft in Flight Sim. I'll try and make this video as complete as possible so you can fly this approach without having too much other knowledge, but there are some basics of instrument flying like how to configure nav radios that I'm going to assume you're already aware of. If there are some gaps you need to fill in there, I recommend you go back and watch the previous videos that I made in the IFR series, specifically the first one for all of the basics, as well as the VOR approaches, which will come in handy as well, even though it's not strictly necessary. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the flight planning aspects that you need to be aware of when you're setting up for the localizer approach, and then I'm going to fly the approach and explain how to interpret all the different markings on the chart. There are a few particularities to this approach to make it interesting and a little bit more of a challenge, so I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Let's jump into the flight planning screen. I set up the flight as a short hop from Stewart International in New York State over to Danbury Municipal in Connecticut. I'm going to be landing on runway 8, which has a localizer approach like I want to demonstrate in this video. A localizer approach is considered a non-precision approach because it only provides you with horizontal guidance, so left or right but it doesn't provide you any vertical up or down guidance. That's in contrast to an ILS approach, which is going to give you both as you're coming in for landing. And I'll look at that in a future video. To set up the flight, I chose IFR low altitude airways just to toggle it into instrument flight rules. And then I chose the arrival for the localizer eight from the dropdown once I selected my airport. That gives me a complete flight plan from my departure airport to my arrival. And it also displays me a lot of information about my approach in that magenta or purple color. If I were to compare the approach that I see on screen here to the actual approach chart, which you can find either on AirNav or on FlightAware, which is going to link to the actual real uh, diagram from the FAA, it's going to look basically identical but it's going to have a lot more detail than what we can see on the flight planning screen here. Some of those details are actually going to be pretty important to be aware of when we're coming into land. And to be honest, you can't really fly the approach without having that extra information that's only available on the real chart. This is definitely a case where Flight Sim needs to do some improvement to show a little bit more information, specifically when it comes to how to align ourselves with the runway by doing either a procedure turn or a hold. A procedure turn basically allows us to fly outbound on the runway heading and then turn back towards the inbound leg. A hold is going to be slightly different, and I'm going to look at that in the video. I've got the weather loaded up to my IFR preset, which has a very low lying clouds. It'll make it a little bit more of a challenge and a lot more realistic weather conditions for flying under instruments. With all of that set, I am pretty much ready to fly the flight. All right, I'm a few nautical miles short of the Kingston VOR shown at the top of the approach chart. The first thing I noticed when I was preparing to fly this approach is that there's a little bit of text right under the Kingston VOR that says procedure not applicable for arrivals on IGN airway radios 107 clockwise to 203. This means you have to be flying to the VOR somewhere between radios 107 and 202. My current heading is 067, which means I'm actually flying on the 245 radial towards the station, which means I'm going to be okay to fly the approach. If you look at it on the map, it makes sense since we need to fly southeastish from the VOR down to the next waypoint. And if you're already arriving from the southeast, it makes it a little bit difficult to turn around at the VOR and head back down towards the localizer approach. If you need a refresher on what radials are and how to fly them, I'd recommend you check out my video on VOR navigation. But put simply, there are 360 radials emitting out from a VOR station, and you can fly to the station on any of those radials. The trick part is that for this approach, you can only fly it if you're arriving on a given set of radials. As I'm going past the Kingston VOR now, I'm going to go on to the next leg of the approach, which means I need to fly a course of 163 from the Kingston VOR all the way down to the next waypoint, which is going to be the Amore intersection. That's going to be the initial approach fix for this approach. It's a long leg, almost 22 nautical miles, and I need to do it at a minimum of 3,000 feet. You'll notice that right near the top, there are two sets of squiggly lines near the Kingston VOR. This means that what's being shown isn't the scale, and the distance from the VOR to the waypoint is actually longer than can be shown without cutting that segment down a little bit. 
The other thing of note is the minimum altitude on this leg of 3000 feet. In my case, I'm already at that altitude, so it's okay. But if I was coming in from higher up, let's say I was at 8,000 feet, this is where I would start the descend down towards that minimum altitude so that I can be ready for the approach as I get closer to the initial approach fix. I fast forwarded a little bit and I'm about five nautical miles from the initial approach fix. So I'm going to start setting my power to my approach configuration. And I'm gonna hold off on applying flaps for just a little bit longer. I've also tuned the localizer frequency to 111.55, which is the frequency for this approach. And I can see that the identifier that's being shown on screen is matches what's actually shown in the chart. So I know I'm actually tracking the right thing. I'm gonna switch over to tracking localizer one now by pressing the CDI key. And I can see that that's working properly as well since it's also telling me I'm picking up the localizer from nav one. And I can see that the course is still somewhere in front of me. Now, once I get to the Amore intersection in just a couple of seconds here, I need to fly the outbound course of the approach on heading 267 and then turn around to fly back towards the airport. There are two different ways to do that. In previous videos, what I've actually done is I've flown something called a procedure turn, which is going to tell you which direction to turn to when you want to turn around from your outbound course to head back towards the airport. This procedure is different though. It's got something called a hold in lieu of procedure turn. You can see there's a loop around the Amore waypoint, which is the starting point for the hold. The hold is showing us that we need to do left-hand turns around the Amore intersection point. But since I'm coming from the opposite direction of the hold, what I'm going to have to do is first fly outbound on the 267 course, and then I'm going to make a right-hand turn and head straight for the Amore intersection point. Since that's the starting point of the hold, once I get to the Amori intersection point, at that point I'll be able to start the hold by doing a left-hand turn, holding it for one minute, and then doing another left-hand turn, and heading back on the inbound course towards the airport. I'm showing you a picture on screen of what that looks like to hopefully make it a little bit clearer. Now that I've started to join the hold, I'm also going to descend down to 2,300 feet, which is the minimum that I can be on that leg of the approach. I think in theory what I should be doing is flying one full loop of the hold, and once I'm back on the inbound course, I should only then descend to 2,000 feet, as we can see on the profile view of the chart. I'm going to assume that ATC cleared me to fly straight in from the moment I get to the Amore intersection point, and I'm gonna start my descent down to 2,000 feet now as well. At the same time as all of this is going on, I need to make sure that I'm staying on the localizer. So the easiest way to do that is just to switch to approach mode, and the autopilot is automatically going to keep me on the right flight path. That's going to free me up to be able to configure the airplane for landing. So now I'm going to extend that first level of flaps. I'm going to make sure my power is set for my final descent down to the runway. And I'm keeping an eye on my airspeed as well. Once I'm past the Amore waypoint, the distance to the next waypoint is so close that I won't have to worry about staying above its minimum altitude of 1,320 feet. What I did is I set my descent altitude to be 1100 feet, which is the minimum descent altitude for this approach that's listed in the bottom section of the chart. I'm also using the autopilot to do that descent with vertical speed mode. It's going to free me up to keep my eyes looking out for the runway. And now that everything else is set up, that's really my next task. I need to start looking for the runway. One thing to note about this approach is that in the localizer, you'll notice that it says localizer offset 2.97 degrees. That means that the signal I'm receiving is not going to be aligned with the runway. I need to be looking somewhere to the right since it's offset by about 2.97 degrees. I need to be able to see the runway before I can descend below 1,100 feet. And it's just about coming into view now. I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the autopilot and I'm going to scooch over a little bit to the right to intercept my final approach course. If I were to stay aligned with the localizer, we'd end up missing the runway because like I was just saying, the localizer is offset by 2.97 degrees. You'll notice that as I align myself with the runway that the localizer is going to be more and more to the left of me, which is totally fine. We can ignore it completely now that we can actually see the runway. The most important thing is to focus on where we're going for landing. 
I'll need to increase my descent rate slightly to make the runway since I'm going to be a little bit high right now since I picked up the runway a little bit further along than I would have liked to because of all of this low lying fog. The only thing I didn't do here is enable the DME option to be able to see how far I am from the localizer. If I had gotten within 0.5 nautical miles of it, I would have had to do the go around procedure because I would have been too close and I wouldn't have been able to make the runway safely. And that's all there is to flying a localizer approach. If you got some value from this video, please make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And as usual, if you have any comments, feel free to put them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you in the next video.